Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Sunday, uh, this time in Easter is affectionately known as Good Shepherd Sunday, and so you've heard some of those themes of the shepherd played out in psalm, in lessons, and in our hymnody. I want to turn our attention to the Gospel of John, uh, though, is where I wish to begin, uh, chapter 10, as we just heard. The, the setting, if you will, for this Gospel is... Uh, the festival of the dedication. Now, a little background. This is affectionately known or known today by our brothers and sisters as Hanukkah. Uh, And uh, it's the festival of the dedication wherein uh, they remember the Maccabean victories against invaders. And these invaders had desecrated the altar. And so what is remembered in this passage is the day upon which uh, they annually rehearse the rededication of uh, the temple altar. Here, during this feast, Jesus stands before those gathered, offering a renewal of a different kind. Not of altars, but rather a renewal of people. Jesus, the shepherd, the bridegroom, stands in their midst and suggests that there is no need for intermediary. God in Christ Jesus is changing the inherited tradition to focus upon him and his relationship to God, thereby dismissing the idea of priest as intermediary, said the bishop. But let's be honest about the gospel instead of avoiding topics that make us uncomfortable. The unique nature of Christian communities you see at worship is the presence not of the priest or the bishop, but of Christ as shepherd. I'm suggesting here that our theology and our spirituality claims that Christ is our great high priest. The Orthodox theologian John Zizoulis suggests it this way. Christ is the celebrant of the Eucharistic feast in all places and at all times. Now, he's orthodox, but this is a beautiful image, which means then, Zizoulis continues, that the bishop is the primary symbol for the church of Christ's presence at the altar. Zizoulis continues that the priest is the regular symbol of the bishop, Uh, and then of Christ at the altar. So when you stand there on my behalf, right, because I can't be everywhere, you also are standing on the behalf of Jesus. The bishop and priest, though, and this is important in our tradition, are chosen by the people to speak our unified voice, the voice of the gathered community, the body of Christ, we say, We are simply are praying the prayers out loud that we hope you all are praying quietly to yourselves. Bishop or priest, pray our words with us. This, in brief, is a liturgical, theological tradition that we don't have time to go into at this point, but we could go a little deeper. It just means that we may not have quite the same high understanding that Zizoulis does, while the imagery and symbol is similar. As an aside, let me say this, why the priesthood and episcopate is less a symbol when all types of people are not invited to serve at the table, you see. So we are always looking for those who might be missing within the orders of the church so as to best represent the body of Christ ourselves. But let us continue to pull on this text a little bit more to get to this shepherding imagery. 
We might say that a similar theology of symbols may be applied to the work of communal shepherding. Christ is the great shepherd of the sheep. Christ models shepherding for us at the table, but also with others throughout the Gospels, healing the sick, feeding those who are hungry, embracing the lost, healing the blind, restoring people to community. The bishop is the chief symbol of Christ's work as the head of the local community, then we could say. It's why I carry a shepherd's crook, the sheep of the diocese. The priest, in turn, is the shepherd or the idea of shepherd in this congregation. But I would add something very important, that people, that you also are shepherds. You, the baptized community who proclaims Jesus Christ. You are the symbol of the body of Christ united and thus an emblem of the great shepherd out in the world in a way that your clergy can never undertake. We are all sheep under the great shepherd. That is true. But it is also true that as Christians, we emulate and attempt to practice the faith of Christ as shepherds. And so we engage in the work of shepherding in the world through mission, acts of evangelism, and service to others. Christ is the lover of sinners and people. We are the body of Christ, and so as the shepherds, as icons of Christ's love to the sinful and to all people whom God loves. When we leave this Eucharistic feast, our table fellowship, we are reminded of our part in the body of Christ out in the world. Through baptism, we're no longer the one, but become the shepherd seeking the one in the 99. That's your work. We hold the sheep tight and safely when danger comes. That's your work. You do not flee when the going gets tough and your neighbor needs help. That's your work. We become gates when people enter into community. That's your work. We understand they're not sheep, uh, not of the sheepfold. And you are representative of God's love to all of the sheep out there. Everyone who goes to church has the opportunity the rest of the week to take what is emulated here by the great shepherd of the sheep, Jesus Christ, and to engage in the practice of shepherding the people and the world. You are to care alike to those who are already found, and for the lost, for the broken and heart sick, for those in deep valleys, for those seeking green pastures, those who hunger, and those who need shelter from the storm. You all are the ones who are the shepherds for those who pray for someone to reach out to help. Every Sunday, we take on a rededication of sorts, seeing that Christ is our shepherd and at our altar with us, and at the same time, rededicating ourselves to the work that Christ has given us to do. And so as we move towards our confirmation and reaffirmation and reception, what we do in this moment is celebrate with those who today rededicate themselves to the work of Christ in our midst. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter, at Texas Bishop, and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you. Thank you.